Welcome back aboard Arabella. Before we get started, there's a sale going on for A2A merchandise from our website. Now that Steve is off the farm and living life aboard, there's no good place to stash it all anymore. So keep an eye on the shop at acorntoarabella.com, where what's left of t-shirts and posters, wool caps, and sticker packs will be discounted until it's all gone. Proceeds from the shop and all your support on Patreon keep our videos free for all and help Steve and Arabella get ready for the 2024 sailing season, where his sights are set along the shores of Newfoundland. For this week's episode, we begin on the first morning waking up on the boat after getting back from a month in New Mexico. I slept with the hatch closed last night because it was chilly. It's good to be home. It's really, really good to be home. I enjoyed the time in the desert. It was a lot of fun. Uh, but I'm really, really happy to be back. It's amazing how much has changed in a month. So when we left, there were schooners coming in and out all day long doing day sails and all the floats were full of boats it was really really busy and about a month later it is empty schooners are all wrapped up people are gone docks are out of the water it's really really wild how fast shop gets closed up here in october so we've got basically two options at this point robin and i woke up this morning and we could see our breath inside the boat and it was even colder outside the boat so we either need to pack up and move south and go in search of some warmer weather or we need to get some heat in this thing and that's the option that we're going with so robin and i are going to overwinter here in camden so if you're looking for a ton of sailing there's not going to be a ton this winter uh, we're definitely going to go out over the next month or two and sail when we can when the weather's good it's really nice that the harbor is all emptied out so for us learning and all of that there's a lot less traffic there's a lot less boats things are a lot more open so that's going to be really nice and we're not really scared of a bit of cold that's fine and we'll have some some pretty nice days in november here even into december so we're gonna do a little bit of sailing but it's not going to be a ton of sailing this winter. The real goal for this winter is for Robin and I to get the boat and Robin's business and our physical selves ready for the 2024 cruising season. So the first order of business for that is to get the wood stove going so that Robin and I have some sort of heat and we are not too cold here in the boat and it can be comfortable. So that's going to be mission number one and then I've got to figure out and finish the hunting down the electric gremlin and get that sorted when we did the video about the electric apparently a bunch of people thank you very much sent it to Nigel Calder who literally wrote the book he wrote the book that I was working out of and Nigel lives in Maine and he reached out and would like to stop by and help me figure out what exactly is going on, sort out the alternator issue, and just in general, give us his thoughts on the system and what could have done better and what we should upgrade. And because I'm, I'm sure he's gonna, have a, he's gonna have a lot of insights. He seems really excited. And then Robin and I got spanked in New Mexico, uh, which was not terribly unexpected. So we also need to get fit this winter because the goal for 2024 is to leave in May and start heading up north to Newfoundland, Nova Scotia. I'd love to see if we can get as far as Labrador and that's going to be a really good shakedown uh, for what I want to do in 2025 which is go up and do some climbing in Baffin Island. So Robin and I need to get physically ready to to go climb and do those adventures and to sail the boat. The boat needs to be in full fighting form come the spring and ready to go uh, and Robin needs to be able to step back enough that we have the time to go do those things so those are our plans for the winter a little bit of sailing a whole lot of boat work so if we can get the boat wrapped up this winter in a lot of ways we'll uh, set the stage really well for next summer
I personally am super excited about the wood stove. We bought the wood stove for Arabella off eBay. Thank you, Colin, for the tip. Uh, before there was even really a boat to speak of. And it's a, it's a shipmate, so it's actually made, designed to, to go into a sailboat like Arabella. This is about the right size stove for a, for a boat about this big. The firebox is really tiny, and there's an oven. Uh, so there's a lot, it's a lot smaller wood stove than people really think. The wood stove like this in a, in a wooden boat is pretty traditional. It's been done for a really, really long time. And if done correctly, is quite safe. So the stove needs to get fastened down. That's one thing we need to work on. I'm not super worried about that at the moment because we're not really going anywhere. And even when we have been getting tossed, the stove hasn't moved at all. So we'll get to that, but it's not super high on the list. The big one is getting the chimney put in here uh, so that we can exhaust it. Because right now, if we were to light the wood stove, we would just fill the boat full of smoke. This is our vent, and this helps with downdrafts. So the smoke comes up, and it comes over, and then up or down to be able to come out. So if this were just a straight pipe, what happens because it's such a short chimney, the wind can come and kind of come down and backdraft and blow smoke in. So this should help with that. I wasn't really sure which one of these designs would work better with the wood stove and which one would work better with the diesel heater. Uh, so I got one of each and we can kind of swap them back and forth and see how they work. Um, and if I find out that one of these works dramatically better than the other, um, then we can replace it accordingly. And then this is a chimney guard. So this will go around the chimney so that if you bump into it, you hopefully don't burn yourself. This see if I can get there. is the wood stove damper. Let's turn the lever opens it and closes it so we can control the draft going up the chimney. And then this is the damper that they recommend for the um, diesel heater. And this has got a little counterbalanced weight so you can move these nuts in and out and get this to kind of sit. And this lets it suck ambient air up and increase the draft in the chimney. So this is what Dickinson recommends for the diesel heater. So that's why they have slightly different dampers. And this was made up for me by Evan at MS Fabrication in Dorchester. He's the one that did the water tanks and our other stainless steel work. And this is what goes through the house top. So I sent Evan the angle and he cut out our disc here and gave him a piece of pipe. And then he TIG welded it at the correct angle. So when this goes on the house top, this will sit flat on the house and the pipe will go vertically. And this is huge because what we'll do is we'll cut the house back quite a ways from this so that when you have all that hot gas going up the chimney that wood is back here somewhere uh, and it's not close enough for it to get hot and this thin metal will dissipate and shed that heat so it can't transfer enough to set the house top on fire. The only issue that we are going to have at the moment is connecting this stovepipe to the wood stove. So we need a reducer to go from whatever diameter pipe will squish around that. And I wanna start building this from the bottom up because we want the damper to be kind of as close to the stove as we can get it. We don't want it really far up the chimney. So I need to get that reducer, then we can install the damper and then see about coming up and around the house sides. So how big is that? Mm. 
Oh, I think it's time for a new tape measure. So about 14 and a half inches, give or take. So if we go and figure out what stove pipe has a circumference of about that, and then we need to make sure that that reduces down to three. I went to the store. I've got my cardboard template put it together here. So this is stainless steel. All that they had for a reducer that would fit was galvanized. And we don't want that because when we light up the stove, that's going to off gas the zinc. And that is poisonous. And that would be bad. So my solution is to make a metal cone out of black stove pipe, which is fine for the heat. Then playing around with this cardboard, and I have it so it fits over the top. That's a little, a little close to that overhead. So we want to lop a little bit more off this, which means we're going to have to snug it back up. And by cutting it down, we increase the angle, which makes the bottoms offset. And that's why I'm doing this out of cardboard instead of trying to do it out of the sheet metal. I'm sure you could mathematically figure this out, but this is, uh, this is more my style. <laughs> See that bottom ran out. So trim that off. I think I like that better. And then we'll put a little piece of straight pipe in. Bring that out to about there and put the shield around it. All right, we're getting there. So that is the shape that we need to cut out of the stove pipe. So we are going to cut that out of this. And then we'll roll that around. And we should have a should have a homemade fitting. We are getting there. <laughs> I'm using stainless steel self tapping screws, so no magic here. I took my piece of black stovepipe here. 
and get that cut and bent. And next I'm gonna install the damper. Generally speaking, when you install things like this, you want these to go on the inside so that <clears throat> if you get buildup creosote inside, it'll run from the inside to the inside and down into your stove. If you put it so that it goes on the outside, the creosote can run down the inside of this and then end up on the outside, catch on fire, and start things on fire around it. So as much as possible, I'm gonna keep these going down. I'm gonna look at this from a few angles and make sure that it looks pretty good because we're gonna live with it for quite a while. All right. So this has gotta come out, I don't know, say in here somewhere. So we gotta cut a short piece of pipe. After going inside to look it up, Steve found recommendations for a 5-inch hole for a 3-inch pipe, so he decided to go with that. And he's been keeping a close eye on it and can widen the diameter later if needed. So this is 4200, and we're pretty permanently gluing this thing on here. This flange is probably a bit bigger, definitely a bit bigger than it needs to be. But that is not a problem. It sits flush on the house, so. I don't see any reason to I not just to leave it.
awesome. It's not going anywhere. clean up and then uh, I think tonight we can light the stove yeah. stoves going and can't even tell It really only smokes when you first light it or when you add a bunch of fuel, but when it's just a good bit of coals like it is now, you can't even really tell it's going. Thanks again, and thanks always to all of our supporters on Patreon. Don't forget the sale on our website going on now at acorntoarabella.com. We'll see you again next week as Nigel Calder helps Steve track down the source of Arabella's electrical issues.